All right, gather round, folks. I got a wild tale to spin about one of the most audacious heists in history, the Great Train Robbery of 1963. This isn't some Hollywood fiction. This actually went down in the English countryside. Picture this. It's a quiet August night in 1963. A train chugs along through the British countryside, same as it has for over a century. But this isn't just any train. It's the Up Special, a mobile post office on wheels. Postal workers are inside, sorting mail and packages as they roll from Glasgow to London. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? Wrong. This night is about to go sideways in a big way. Now, you might be wondering, why would anyone want to rob a mail train? Well, this particular train was carrying a motherload of cash. We're talking 2.6 million euros, which in today's money is over $50 million. That's a lot of coin, friends, and a gang of 15 crafty criminals had their eyes on the prize. Let's meet our cast of characters, shall we? First up, we've got Bruce Reynolds, the mastermind. This guy wasn't your average crook. He was a burglar and antique dealer with a taste for the finer things in life. Fresh out of prison, he started putting together a crew that would make Danny Ocean jealous. Reynolds tapped his buddy, Gordon Goody, to be his right hand. Goody was a hairdresser by day, thief by night. Talk about a split personality, but these two knew they needed more muscle. So they brought in Buster Edwards, a former boxer turned club owner who led another gang. His gang members included Charlie Wilson and Ronnie Biggs. Now, pulling off a heist like this isn't just about having tough guys. You need information, and Reynolds had an ace up his sleeve, an insider called the Ulster Man. This mysterious man gave them all the juicy details, the train schedule, how much cash it would be carrying, and which car to hit. But here's the million dollar question, how do you stop a moving train? Enter Roger Gordry, the gang's MacGyver. This guy came up with a brilliant plan to mess with the railway signs. Using nothing but some black paper, leather gloves, batteries and wire, he figured out how to turn the green light red, bringing the train to a screeching halt. So there they were, 15 guys hiding out at a farm, playing Monopoly and knocking back beers while they waited for the big day. Little did they know that a game of Monopoly would come back to bite them later. Finally, the night arrives. It's just past 3 a.m. on August 8, 1963. The gang cuts the phone lines near the tracks, and Reynolds, cool as a cucumber, lights up a fancy cigar. The train approaches, sees the red light, and stops. The driver, poor Jack Mills, gets clocked on the head when he tries to figure out what's going on. Now, you'd think they'd have a getaway driver who could, you know, actually drive a train. But their guy, Peter, couldn't hack it. So they force the injured Mills to drive the train a mile and a half to their unloading spot at Berdego Bridge. Talk about adding insult to injury. In just 15 minutes, yeah, you heard that right, 15 minutes, these guys managed to unload 120 stacks of cash weighing two and a half tons. They haul it back to their hideout and divvy up the loot. At this point, they're probably feeling pretty good about themselves. Just two days later, Scotland Yard assembles an elite team of detectives called the Flying Squad. These aren't your average cops. They're the cream of the crop, led by Detective Chief Superintendent Tommy Butler. This guy was known for being thorough, and boy did he live up to his reputation. One of Butler's top men was Jack Slipper, a tall dude with a pencil mustache who would become famous for his relentless pursuit of these train robbers. Slipper was like a dog with a bone. He just wouldn't give up. Now, here's where it gets good. Just over a week after the robbery, the cops get a tip about a suspicious farmhouse about 30 miles from the crime scene. Turns out, it's the gang's hideout, and these geniuses left behind a treasure trove of evidence. Food, bedding, banknote wrappers, and get this, fingerprints on a ketchup bottle, and that Monopoly set they'd been playing with. Within a day, they nab Roger Cordry. A week later, Charlie Wilson goes down. The dominoes start falling. Jimmy White, Roy Jones, Buster Edwards, and Ronnie Biggs? His fingerprint on that ketchup bottle seals his fate. He's arrested on September 4th. But the story doesn't end there, folks. Oh no, it's just getting started. While most of the gang is cooling their heels in prison awaiting trial, some of them are already plotting their escapes. Biggs, in particular, has itchy feet. The trial kicks off in January 1964, and it's a doozy. It drags on for months, with testimony from bank officials and even Jack Mills, the injured train driver. 
In the end, the jury finds them all guilty. The judge, not impressed with the violence against Mills, throws the book at him. Most of the gang gets 30 years each, but here's where it gets really wild. Charlie Wilson, locked up in a maximum security prison, becomes the first to escape in August 1964. They catch him four years later, but still pretty impressive. Then there's Ronnie Biggs. This guy becomes a legend in his own right. Just 15 months into his sentence at Wandsworth Prison, Britain's version of Alcatraz, he pulls off a daring escape in a furniture van. But Biggs doesn't just lay low. No, this madman gets plastic surgery to change his face, then hightails it to Australia and eventually Brazil. For over three decades, Biggs plays cat and mouse with British authorities. Detective Slipper even shows up at his door in Brazil in 1974, but Biggs manages to slip away again. There's even a failed kidnapping attempt by some ex-military types in 1981. It's like something out of a movie, I swear. In 2001, Biggs, now old and sick, voluntarily returns to the UK to serve out his sentence. The man who almost got away with it all decides to face the music after all those years on the run. Now, you might be wondering what happened to all that money. Well, most of it was never recovered. Some of the robbers gave back their share, but a good chunk of it vanished into thin air. So there you have it, folks. The Great Train Robbery of 1963. A tale of daring, cunning, and ultimately, hubris. These guys pulled off one of the biggest heists in history, only to be undone by a bottle of ketchup and a board game. It just goes to show, even the best laid plans can go off the rails.